Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the live stream celebration of the liturgy. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. And in the Gospel, it is taken from the beginning of Mark. Unlike Luke and Matthew, Mark does not include any details of Jesus' birth. Instead, he begins with the appearance of John the Baptist in the desert. Today, we are invited to reflect on the role of John the Baptist, who prepared the way for Jesus and the salvation that he would bring us. Our gathering song is, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
strength of will for doing good, that Christ may find an eager welcome at his coming and call us to his side in the kingdom of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are forgiven. Yes, she has received a double portion of woe from the Lord for all our sins. Behold, a voice of someone cries out, prepare the way through the desert wilderness, for the Lord makes straight a highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and hills, straighten the curves and smooth out rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. O Zion, messenger of good news, shout it from the mountaintops. Cry out at the top of your voice, O Jerusalem. Cry out, and do not be afraid. Proclaim the towns of Judah. Your God is coming. Yes, our sovereign God is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. Behold, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the ooze with tender care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with the roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought we to be? We ought to live holy and godly lives as we look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where the justice of God will reside. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with God. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. Let us hear what the Spirit says to the church. Thanks be to God. ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one crying in the wilderness, 
preparing the way for the Lord, makes straight the path for him. Thus it was that John the Baptist appeared in the de desert wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were be being baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one who is more powerful than I. The throngs of, his, of those sandals I am not even worthy enough to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This, my brothers and sisters, is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, come, eternal light and son of justice, shine in all our darkness. Lord Jesus, come, hallelujah, hallelujah. So today we celebrate the second Sunday of the Advent season. The Advent season is to remind us that spiritual life has different aspects. And the aspect of spiritual life that we are celebrating in Advent is the spirituality of waiting. Now I used to be a very impatient person. And uh, oh well I still am if you talk to my wife. <laughs> And uh, I would often pray to God, give me patience, make me a patient person. And I would often pray this prayer and eventually the answer came to me. And the answer was, you want to be patient? Then wait. <laughs> and I've still been waiting all this time. So uh, Advent is a time in which we're reminded that much of the spiritual life of being a disciple of Jesus involves anticipation. And anticipation has very many aspects. Uh, last week, the message was, watch, pay attention. So while you're waiting, you pay attention. Now, while we're waiting, we don't just sit around doing nothing uh, while we're waiting. There's something to do, and that's today's message. The message of the second Sunday of Advent is that we are to spend our time waiting by preparing. And how do we prepare? We prepare by uh, doing acts of kindness and generosity and acts of justice. So the second Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of peace, but there is no peace without justice. And so what we're called to do during the Advent season while we're waiting is to do acts of justice, kindness, and love. And in doing these things, we make a difference and we uh, are really watching and waiting in the way that the season calls us to do. In the ancient land of Israel, there were three institutions. There was the royal family, the king, there was the temple and the high priest, and then there was the prophet, the Nebuchadnezzar. The Nebuchadnezzar were the prophets and John the Baptist was unmistakably a prophet. He was also a priest. His father was a priest. And if you had a father who was a priest, that would make the son a priest. But John the Baptist did not minister as a priest in the temple. Instead, he ministered in the wilderness out in the desert where people came by the multitude to see him and to hear his prophetic voice once again, which electrified the nation. So they came and he baptized them in the Jordan River. As they came to the river to pray, he baptized them. 
and commanded them to repent. And the word repent is the word metanoia, which means to change your mind, to think differently about your life and about the lives of others. So Advent is an invitation to wait, but in the meantime, we do acts of justice to bring peace to the world. And we also wait in love for the coming of the savior of the world. And that's what Advent is about. And may this be a great Advent for you this season as you wait in anticipation for what God is about to do. And he's got something fantastic in mind. So let us look forward with great eagerness to what God is about to do in our midst. And in doing that, we keep the spirit of the season of Advent. And that, I think, my brothers and sisters, is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The season of Advent continues. 4,000 years of waiting for the Messiah, commem commemorated by the lighting of four candles. We join with the hopeful throng in the lighting of the Advent candles, symbols of our faith and signs of God's love. We are a people of hope. Last Sunday, the frail light of a single candle dared to pierce through the darkness of desolation. Hope lives in us and will abide with us. Today we will light the candle of peace. This light too must break great darkness. In an age when people so seldomly find peace within themselves, and when all the earth stands under the threat of total annihilation, we light a fire called peace. Peace is not merely the absence of war and conflict, but the peace is the fullness of blessing for all, that is, the peace for which we dare to hope. Christ comes to bring peace to those who have been separated from God and one another. In the name of that child born so long ago, we light the candle of peace. In following Christ's teachings, we nurture our hope for peace even today. God of light, we are waiting for you. God of light, we are waiting for you. God of hope and mercy, God of power and peace. God of light, we are waiting for you. We shall call you, we burn you well. We shall call
Lord Jesus Christ. You said to your apostles, I give you peace. My peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all God's church. Your word, Father, gives us hope that your reign is near at hand. This table you have set before us is a promise 
of the fullness of eternal life. May the fire of the Holy Spirit fill these gifts when give us with life with your Son, Jesus the Messiah, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We ask this through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. So lift lift them up to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Father, it is our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Word through whom you made the universe, the Savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this, he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And so we join angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we sing. prepared the way for the coming of your Son. Through the prophets, you promised a day of consolation and peace, preparing your people in joy and hope to receive your incarnate word. When the time was right, John the Baptist was sent as herald of the glad tidings that your reign was near at hand. Now all the earth is filled with the knowledge of you, and throughout the world, Christians prepare with joy to celebrate the coming in flesh of your saving grace. You have led us in joy by the light of your glory and gathered us here in harmony and peace according to the Spirit of Jesus our Messiah. Holy God, we praise you for the good news of our redemption. Complete the work you have begun in us and bring us to that new dawn when together we shall see the dazzling light of your love. Pour out the light of the Holy Spirit of love and shine through these simple gifts of bread and wine that they might become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and that we may know your power and presence. 
on the night he was betrayed, the light of his love shone through the darkness, and he took the bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciple and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup again. He gave you thanks and praise gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has perfection of your love, Jesus. Through his dying and rising, you have shown light into our darkness. Through the gift of your Holy Spirit, you have caused your word to illuminate our path, that we might walk more closely with you. May we accept one another now as Christ has accepted us and live in perfect harmony according to the Holy Spirit, in communion with Mary, the mother of Jesus, John the Baptist, Paul the Apostle to the Gentiles, and all the saints and everyone who follows the way of peace. In this time of hope-filled anticipation, remember all your people of faith throughout the world and their spiritual leaders their bishops, and especially Peter, our bishop, their ministers, pastors, and priests. Shepherd gently your people through their guidance, wisdom, and love. Let your love be our love as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, as we prepare the way by heralding in word and deed the glad tidings of your love for all. Trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. As a mother comforts her children, comfort us and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, deliver us from every evil and protect us from all fear as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior and brother, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oh 
strengthen our love for you and for one another. We ask this in the spirit of peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, well, we do have a few announcements this morning. Um, this is Food Drive Sunday, so if you are watching from home, we will be doing about an hour worth of um, sitting outside and collecting food. So feel free to drive by anytime between 11 and noon, and we will collect food and send it over to WSWA. Um, also, it's a little late of a notice, but we are having a toy drive next week. I know it's a very short notice, but um, we will be doing a toy drive um, be on the lookout on Facebook for a list of items that we're looking for, and then also we're going to try to do a posting on our website as well. So, um, toy drive, be thinking about all those people that um, need some help this season, and um, more so than ever during these times. Um, and just to come up with calendar uh, things, on Wednesdays we do have a rosary. So um, for those uh, faithful praying of the rosary, uh, we do meet on Wednesday nights at 5 p.m. And then uh, there is a wonderful Sunshine Club on um, Saturdays by Martha and Yeti at 11 uh, p.m. So bring your kids, bring your grandkids, bring uh, anyone who uh, can uh, enjoy some uh, young at heart uh, things here. Um, just a little bit of uh, news about the Bible study. Uh, we're on a break right now, but we will be resuming in January. So be on the lookout for information for that. And for those of you at home that would like to pray in person, we do have an in-person um, outdoor mass that's going on right now. Um, it's uh, every Sunday from 9.30 to 10.30 on a trial basis, so we can see if we get um, enough interest. Um, but also, if you uh, used to come by and get drive-up communion, uh, we do that immediately following the uh, outdoor mass. So make sure you stop by. You can even maybe attend Mass in your car. Uh, whatever you'd like. Uh, we just want to make sure we get everyone included on our um, messages. Um, and then last but not least, um, we do have a stewardship message this morning. And this is by our Deacon Adelia. So we are going to give her some attention right now as she gives us a message about stewardship. Peace be with you. And also with you. Good morning, brothers and sisters of St. Matthew Ecumenical Catholic Communion. I always like to say the whole thing. On this Bethlehem Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent, love is ever present as we prepare our hands and our hearts for the baby Jesus. Today, Mariah and I want to talk with you about our love for our little storefront church. We walked into St. Matthew on January 10th, 2014. It was a cold Sunday morning, kind of like today, 
Both of us raised Catholic, educated in Catholic schools for many years, and yearned for a place to be where we could be ourselves as two women married, and also to receive the sacraments and have a church home. We both cried tears of happiness throughout the Mass that morning. We received a lovely reception after Mass by Mother Martha, who invited us out to lunch. We came back the next Sunday and have kept coming. Why, next month is going to be seven years. During that time, the storefront church has become to us a cathedral. We have found a place to give service, a place to share with family and friends, a place of learning. Our bishop, dear Bishop Peter is our founder and he's a brilliant teacher. We call both the bishop and his wife Mirella our dear friends. I was able to realize a lifelong dream since I was a young girl. I have found the path to priesthood. I was ordained a deacon last November. With Mariah by my side, it has been one of the most powerful and deeply spiritual experiences of my life. One day I was sitting in the church office just next door and I noticed the wood panel on the wall, the statement, you created heaven and earth. We are creating your house. It came alive for me, and I marveled at the many names that were etched next to it. This morning, I want to remind all of us that we are still creating this house of God. We are building it not only that we continue to have this wonderful home, this loving sanctuary, but also for those yet to come. Those that are wandering out in the desert, so to speak, looking for a promised land. The ups and downs of any church is not unusual, but it takes bringing forth the love and the commitment that we have and renewing it that will keep our church home alive. One thing that I've noticed during these challenging times, especially during this pandemic, is the creativity and the determination that has come forth from all over, from all over the world, from everyone. New ideas, better ways to do things, fun ways to do things. We have all those abilities here in all of us. Join Mariah and I in keeping our cathedral alive. Pray, tell, give. Keep praying. Tell people about our church and give generously so that we can keep our doors open and the lights on so others will find us, so they too may receive the Holy Sacraments. We leave you with this prayer. Jesus, you came among us with the irresistible power of a baby, requiring both of our hands and captivating our whole hearts. Help us to cast aside our doubts, our complacency, our troubled ways, our brokenness that we tend to cling, that we tend to cling to, so that we will be ready to hold you, Jesus. So when you come again, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Adaya. A very powerful message to take with you today. Pray, tell, and give. Um, with that, I think we have ended our Mass. Let us go forth and love and serve one another. This Mass has ended. Thanks be to God. And I just have a little request. I would like to ask you to pray for our son, Matthew, who turns 21 on Tuesday, our little boy. <laughs> Thank you.